Hey, trail makers, John here. This plane flies straight, or does it? Most know the basics, you know, center of gravity, the center of drag has to align with the center of gravity, as does the center of thrust and center of lift. Some minor notes are that because drag and thrust are linear in the forwards and backwards direction, they could be in front or behind the center of gravity, and the lift can be above or below because it is also linear as in the force goes in a line. Therefore, it can be placed anywhere along that line and have the same exact net effect. So this plane is not going straight. The lift uh, causes, the lift is in front of the center of gravity, causes it to nose up. The t drag on the tail stops the nose from going up too far. In the end, these two forces mostly end up balancing out. This plane is balanced. This plane is not straight. Furthermore, this can be proven when the plane dives and when it rolls. As you can see, when it rolls, the nose slightly pitching up will cause it to bank and take the turn very slowly, but it still does turn. And dives are much the same, but for a very different reason, as is flying upside down. Now, why, in a dive, does it pitch up? Well, because gravity is helping it go faster. Why does that affect it? Simple, because some of the forces are affected by some other external effects. For example, center of gravity is only changed if the mass or other properties get changed. For example, if you detach like a bomb or something, the center of gravity will shift. However, center of drag and center of lift, both of those forces shift according to the amount of airspeed. And thrust doesn't necessarily change, but it does get turned on and off pretty regularly. What this means is that it, when it goes down, the faster it goes, the more the lift beats the effects of the tail drag, therefore allowing it to pitch up even more. Lift control often helps with such problems, but ultimately different speeds result in different controls, and there is no fundamental way around this other than having either one, a perfectly balanced aircraft, which is borderline impossible, or having a, an aircraft that is specialized for some very, very specific settings and then using other control systems to keep it flying in those settings. Now, why does all this matter? Well, quite simply, let me give you three examples. Imagine you are building a stunt plane, a large cargo plane, and a fighter jet. Let's say, let's talk about flying upside down. A stunt plane would need to be able to fly upside down without dropping like a rock. So a stunt plane would optimally have very little lift to pull it down when it's upside down and instead have very large wings with lots of drag instead, instead of lift to keep it going in a straight steady line even if it's upside down. Whereas a cargo plane doesn't go upside down very often, and so it's not as much of a concern. However, what is a concern for a cargo plane is the amount of lift. So it doesn't need to worry about the lift pulling it into the ground when it's flying upside down, because it doesn't fly upside down. And fighter jets, they go through, they fight in very different speeds. Stunt planes are generally low to medium speed, Large cargo craft are also low to medium speed, but fighter jets can go anywhere from low speed during turn fighting to high speed during boom and zoom. This means that what matters most for fighter jets is good controllability at different sets of speeds, while also being able to fly upside down, while lift, because it's just a fighter jet and it'll be going fast anyway, and therefore have enough thrust to compensate, will not need as much lift. But whichever combination of priorities that you have for any of those, no matter what, the, 
you will still need to design it to fly straight and balanced, or at least close to straight and balanced, when you're not touching the controls, otherwise it won't feel comfortable to fly. So that's why all this matters, because it's critical to how you tune an aircraft, and understanding what your requirements for an aircraft are can immediately help you tune an aircraft to be better at its role. And that's about it for this video. It's a bit short. Feel free to leave comments or something. Also, I have no clue what to do for the next video, so I'm still taking suggestions. Goodbye!